Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I edit all of my videos and put them together and import them onto my computer and all that stuff. So, if you're wanting to actually check out the video that I'm editing here, make sure to check that out up there. It was actually the video that was uploaded on Wednesday. So yeah, now let's just get into importing everything and then actually getting to editing. Okay, so first off in my process of editing, I get to plugging in my Samsung T3 external SSD because that's what I put all of my footage onto. Then I go and grab the SD card out of my camera, both the actual camera and then also from my drone. So grab that, and this is only if, of course, I include drone shots in my video. And then from there, I get to importing everything onto my computer by just plugging in the SD cards. From there, I just open up my SD cards, obviously, and I go through and make sure that I don't have multiples of a lot of things. So I make a lot of mistakes. I am human, so when I'm actually shooting my videos, as you can see here, I've got multiple of the same take. So I go through and watch them, to see which ones are the greatest. Drone. See, like, I make mistakes a lot, so I go through and watch these to see which ones actually are the greatest ones, and then I delete the ones that are bad. After I went through all that and made sure that there isn't anything that I want to delete, go to my SSD, go to, I categorize everything by the months, so as you can see, it is the month of June, so then I go and create a new folder and I title them like so. So then from there, I create subfolders and title them with my main camera, then the drone, then screen capture, fours, extras. And then after I've done that, then Panasonic is obviously where all of these videos right here belong. So I go and drag those into Panasonic. And then I just wait for everything to import onto the SSD. Also, while we're waiting for all that to copy over, I just have a library here that I created a while back. Don't ask me why I did it. I just do that every time and then copy it over and just paste it into the actual folder. Rename this to 500 meter max distance, something like that. Now we just gotta wait until this is actually finished. After that, I literally just do the same exact process for the drone shots. I just find the same shots and then import those to the drone subfolder. After that, I actually use a program called Rename and I open that up and that just mass changes all the names of files. So I can change this to Panasonic, change that to After. Then I just drag and drop all the different video files into there and click Rename. Look at that, it renames them all. And drone shots, since there's only one, I can just go and do DJI drone 500 meter distance. So now we've changed all that. There's also the screen cap, but it's already close enough that I like that. So now we actually get into opening up my editor of choice, which is Final Cut Pro. If anybody's wondering, yes, you can get Final Cut Pro for free, but it's just a trial. You can get it by just going to Google and searching Final Cut Pro trial, and then just click on go to download, and this will actually take you to an Apple site, and you can download it for free for 30 day trial, and then after that you do have to sadly buy it, but it is a really great program, and it's just what I've always used, so. Anyways, from here, I just import the videos from my SSD, which is just import media, then I find the folder I just created right there, and notice my settings over here, I leave the files in place, I actually leave them on the SSD instead of going and actually copying them to library because I don't wanna make multiple copies of the same video or else my SSD would fill up so quickly. So I just import all that, do import selected, then create new project. So now that all those have been imported, I just drag and drop all of them onto my timeline here and begin scrubbing through and chopping up the video actually. So like I said earlier, I usually delete the videos in the beginning, but I actually didn't delete them. So the final shot is typically the greatest one. So I'm gonna actually delete these two right here and just watch this through and chop it. So when you get to the end of your clip, to actually cut the clip, you can either just press B, which brings you to the blade tool, or you can go Command B and that will actually chop the video right there. 
So to delete, you just press the delete button on your computer. And then the second step to actually editing my videos, I go and I line up all the clips. So right here, as you can see, I have three different clips. One is from the drone shot, one is from the app, and one is actually of me down here. So to actually sync my videos, I go and like clap or snap or something like that typically. So as you can see right here, there are the actual audio points where it peaks. So that is where I can match up my audio. Uh, actually matching up the drone shot is a little bit more difficult because I have to look on the app because there's no audio. So right there. About right there is where it starts. And to disable clips, you just press V. So as you can see there, it just turned off that clip. And if I did that here, that turns that off as well. And it's just disabling it. Like you can actually chop it and turn on that right there if you wanted. But I don't want that. So now I gotta find the beginning of my clip here. To chop all the clips at once, you just do Shift Command B. And you can delete like that. Okay, so there you go. Now, actually, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import a PNG of a phone, which it's just, it's supposed to look like an iPhone. So, you can go and import this. And the reason that I do this is when I actually drag this onto my timeline, it actually shows and looks like a legitimate iPhone. And you don't have to do this step. Like, nobody has to do this step. I just do it because it just makes it look a little bit more professional and I should have done, done this earlier but go drag this down in the corner and then I'm actually going to go and drag this below the screen clip right there and I actually need to go and resize this now since I messed up but go and resize this so then it actually fits that screen now again this is not necessary by any means this is just I, I like to do this extra step because see the difference between that and that. Don't you think that that looks a little bit better than that? I don't know, maybe some people have different opinions, but I think that looks a little bit better. And I'm actually gonna do that for this video here as well, so I'm just gonna drag this over just by grabbing that. And then you can actually copy all video settings from here, and you can paste all the properties from that clip by just doing Shift-Command-V and I'll bring up this box right here so it actually copies all of the same things to that clip. See how that just did everything without me having to resize it? Makes the process a whole lot easier. And I'm also gonna need to drag this phone all the way to the end of the screen capture. So then it shows up for all this. And I'm also, as you can see, I'm also gonna have to go and do that same thing for here. So let's do that one more time, Shift Command v which is just pasting the audio and video attributes to the other clip so here there's a pause so i'm going to chop that out you can actually go by frames by just pressing the right arrow which is why there's tons of arrows going by so you can go frame by frame by just pressing those arrows so i'm not going to go through and edit the rest of this video because that'll take a little while but that's pretty much the basics for how i chop up these videos and then eventually, if I wanna get a drone shot in here, like I was mentioning earlier, you can press V for enabling and disabling drone shots or really any videos you have stacked here. So I could disable all these here and just have that, or I can turn on the drone shot. So if I wanted to have that, then I can just go and show that right there. So now one more thing that I just wanna show that I do often that it couple people ask about is my transition. So the transition that I use, you can access transitions by clicking this over here, slide. So right here it will show the slide. So I go and I put this between changing locations. So as you can see here, I'm in my backyard and then magically I'm in front of my house. So from here, then I just change the duration of this transition and bring that down to 15 frames. After that, I go up into this top left and click on this little camera and iTunes looking thing and go to the sound effects tab. And then along here, you can either search up here and search for it 
or you can find it. So whoosh2 is the sound effect that I use. As you can see right here, just go and drag that and drop it down below your main track. And I put this actually a little bit before the actual transition. I actually turned down this volume because it's pretty loud a lot of the time. So I turned that down to about negative 12-ish. So I've been flying for Just a little, a little bit, bit quieter. Also, I apologize for all these dropped frames. I'm screen capturing and I'm trying to edit at the same time. My computer's having a little bit of a tough time putting up with it. But yeah, so that's pretty much some of the basics of editing with Final Cut Pro. But one final thing that I want to show how I do is people ask about my ending. So for my endings of my videos, oh, this is actually for the thumbnail. So. As you can see there, I can delete that. This is what an outro just looks like. So for that end screen, I actually created an end screen with Apple Motion, and I created it in that, and that's a completely different video, but I just access my outro here, and this is what it looks like. I just drag that below the final track, and when I actually get to the part where I want to shrink this, I just go and find that, click on the clip, Go back to where it shows transform and then you're going to keyframe this so up here in the top left as you can see click on that little diamond icon and then go ahead a couple of frames and then downsize the video itself and drag it over here and you don't have to click that keyframe button again it'll just automatically do it for you so then when you click done look at this and turn on there you go that is how I do that transition effect right there. And so yeah. So anyways guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanna say now that I'm sorry this video wasn't so much for beginners, but for people that were more interested in how I edit. If you wanna see a more in depth video in the future over Final Cut Pro for maybe more beginners and stuff like that, then definitely make sure to let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, if you guys found this video interesting, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see future videos like this, make sure to click that subscribe button down below, even if you're on mobile. If you'd like to check out my last video, that should be up there, and some random video should be down there. So yeah, guys, that is it for this video. See you guys in the next video. Peace.